This is RJ Carbone, and you're listening to BD4. Anthony for three. Bang! That one goes this one by Mattingly. Oh, hang on to the RJ Barrett does it again from down. He is just tearing the Orioles apart. It's good. It's good. Randall gets the bounce, and he ties the game. Creates and shows some dexterity as well with the left hand. Yankees win. Yankees win. All right. What's happening, everybody? I'm your host, RJ Carbone, and you are listening to BD4, where there's no better way to get your Yankees and Knicks analysis. And we also do MMA now, too, on the weekends. In fact, this episode is going to be strictly MMA-based. I think it's the first episode I'm doing here on the podcast that's going to be only MMA and in a solo episode. So, it might be a little different, difficult, more difficult for me, for sure. You know, as I'm still pretty new to watching this sport, about, you know... I hopped on mid-2020. You know, I think we had... We've had a bunch of MMA episodes, but most of them have uh, been with guests. And the ones that weren't with guests have been, you know, combined with, like, Nick's episodes. So this one might be shorter, because I don't know how long I can talk about a sport that I don't have the knowledge in, like I do with the Yankees and the Knicks. But... We're going to see how long we can go. And I do know a lot about the sport. I've I've grown so much as an MMA fan. I've, I've learned so much over the years because I've become such a fanatic. In fact, it's probably my favorite thing to watch. So, as you are listening, maybe you're watching the podcast. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Uh, but if you're new here. Excuse me. If you are new here, just a... Uh, you can find the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, Anchor, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, and whatever other listening platforms I'm sure it's on. BD4. And if you do listen, if you do listen to us on Apple Podcasts, be sure to give us a five star rating and review. We've gotten nothing but five stars so far, so this is the five star podcast. <laughs> But if you want to listen, oh, I'm sorry, if you want to watch, if you want to watch the video version of this podcast, you can do that too. You can watch us on YouTube. Search BD4. You'll find us on YouTube. Subscribe to us there. Comment if you're there. Subscribe, uh, comment, share it, all that stuff. And if you want to follow me on my social media platforms, I'm on Facebook, RJ Carbone, and I'm on Instagram, at Rob J. Carbone. Guys, I also have a blog. I'm writing for the Ultimate Sports Networks.com. So if you go to the if you go to Ultimate Sports Networks.com, no the. If you go to Ultimate Sports Networks.com, and if you search the Bomber Bocker blog, you'll find me. My blog. I write Knicks content for them. And obviously I write Yankees content when they are in season. But right now we're writing Knicks content. We're doing recaps after every game. So check me out. UltimateSportsNetworks.com And just search the Bomber Bocker blog. You can subscribe to the Bomber Bocker blog. And you'll get a discount on all types of things. You'll get a discount. $7.99 a month. As a subscriber to read my content. And you'll also get discounts if you go to the MVP shop and if you want to buy some of my merch. So, with that all said, all that boring stuff out of the way, let's get to our first plug real quick. Alright, in this episode once again though, episode 318, we are talking MMA. Going to be previewing the UFC fight card coming up on Saturday. As I am recording, it is February 4th on a Friday. 
and the UFC Fight Night 200 takes place Saturday the 5th. Which is probably when you're listening to this. Um, I'm probably going to publish it late night, February 4th. So you'll probably hear it, watch it, whenever, whatever you're doing to get your to get this podcast by then. Late night, the 4th, sometime, February 5th, whenever. So, yeah, we'll be talking about the... Uh, just the main event, because I don't, I really don't know, don't think I know anybody else on that card. But obviously we're going to be talking about the main event. It's a good one. And I expect it to be good. So, let's set the break. And we'll get right into it when we get back. Hey guys, so I've noticed that only a small portion of you who watch BD4 on YouTube are actually subscribed. So if you do enjoy this podcast, and maybe you want to be notified when new episodes release, I'd consider subscribing and also hitting that notification bell. This way, we can help the channel grow, and you won't miss a single episode of BD4. Alright, let's get back to it. So, if you guys want to follow me on social media, be sure to do so right now. I'm on Facebook at RJ Carbone, and I'm also on Instagram at Rob J Carbone. Once again, if you want to find me on Facebook, that is RJ Carbone, Instagram at Rob J Carbone. Alright, so this is going to be something. I'm actually very excited for this card. And I know it's a fight card. You know, a lot of the... uh, A lot of MMA fans. At least the more casual MMA fans. Give fight cards a lot of shit. But it's like, do you want a headliner every single weekend? Do you really expect that you're... Some of us are so spoiled, dude. So spoiled. I actually like the fact that big pay-per-view events only come around about once a month. That makes it more more exciting, right? It adds to the anticipation. So it makes MMA unlike any other sport. You know, it makes it different because it's there's never an off season other than the the couple week, month, one month maybe one month layoff at the end of the year. Heading into the new year. But you're getting fights every single weekend outside that. And then you're getting a big one once a month. It's awesome. And some people sleep on these fight cards. There have been plenty of fight cards in the past that have been better than some of the pay-per-views. In this one, the main event at least. Very good. I like it. I like Strickland. I like Jack Hermanson. So I think it's going to be a good one. I do. Um, so, Strickland versus Hermanson. Main event, middleweight bout. First off, before we even get into the fight preview, did anybody see Sean Strickland's pre-fight press conference. (laughs) If I didn't like this guy, his ways already, this would have made him, this would have made me like him all over again and more. Listen, (laughs) okay. If you are one to be easily offended by individuals with no filter, (laughs) <laughs> how it should be. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then I advise you to not watch this Strickland press conference if you have not yet. Because what he says is absolutely shocking if you're one of those people easily offended. 
However, if you are one to not give a F and just here to have a good time and, and be entertained and laugh your way through life and understand that it, that's it, you know in the fight game you have to have some kind of gimmick. Please do watch it. I advise you to watch it if you're one of them. It is, I would say, 10 to 15 minutes of, so it's not long, but it's 10 to 15 minutes of of entertainment. It's so easy to sit through. Again, if you're not easily offended. But it's just 10, 15 straight minutes of nonsense with no central focus. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. I, I love that he did not even mention the fight that's taking place tomorrow night. Once. I'm pretty sure he didn't mention the fight once. I mean, the whole thing had nothing to do... Zero to do with fighting. And that's usually the way it is with Strickland. I mean, he's a dude who is... You know, I wouldn't say he's well-spoken. I would definitely not call him well-spoken. But... There is truth in there. He says it in different ways. But there's a lot of truth in what he says. It's edgy. It's real. And it's shit that is only magnified because it's to the public, to the media, and everybody hears it and wants to act outraged because their neighbor does. But any human being on earth knows that so many people, a lot of guys talk like this to their buddies. Just in terms of having no filter and not spewing artificially crafted generic statements. Like that's what's so refreshing about Sean. He's not a fighter who just goes up there and gives you the cliche. He's not that guy. And I love that he can get away with this all. And he talks about that in the conference. Because he's winning. And when you're winning, you make the UFC money. He knows where the line is and he does not cross it too. So he's not going to be cut He's not going to be fined. And that's why I love the UFC. Because you can say what you want. At least you can't do... You can say so much more in the UFC than you can any other you know, big corporate sport. Like, like the MLB, the NBA. You can never say shit like this. But that's why I love the UFC. There are so many different personalities. People are... They're, they're actually... Athletes in the UFC are actually allowed to be themselves. I watch the NBA every night. I watch the MLB every night. I am so tired of hearing the same thing in every press conference from every player. Oh, we tried our best. It was this, it was that. It was a team effort, this. But in the UFC, you have so many different and unique personalities. It's hard not to love. You got your humble guys like Brandon Marino. Doug Rose Nama Yunus. You got your cocky ones. You got your Connors. Your Kobe Covingtons. You know, your explicit, unfiltered guys like the Diaz brothers. Uh, Chael Sonnen. Chael Sonnen. Whatever his name is. Dude's awesome. He was he was the, the number one shit talker in his prime. You got Sean. But I mean, he was he was saying everything he wanted. He was not holding back. There was no boundary. He was bouncing left and right off the walls, the ceiling, the the floor. He there was no there was no central topic of conversation. He was just spewing shit. And I don't even think the guy came up for air. I think blowjob was the first word, the first two word two words that came out of his mouth before even sitting down and picking up the mic. <laughs> I just heard him mumble that. Later called himself the prostitute of the UFC. He had an entire monologue, not even a minute into his presser, about being white trash, being broke, growing up with no bathroom doors. Talked about his fantasies to to kill people with his own hands. And, and again, I'm not saying that's true. I'm just saying it's it's... A lot of what he says is true. 
and he's saying things that people are scared to say because maybe they might think so themselves. That might not be that. That's something different. But again, a lot of this is not true. It's just if it's either true or he puts it in a in a different way, or it's just some of what he says is part of his gimmick. But I mean, a lot of what he says is true. I mean, he's shitting on everything on the media, and I quote this, so I'm not saying that he's calling the, 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 one of the uh, reporters gay haircut and how they probably jerk off to the fights. I can't believe I'm saying this shit. He was throwing shots at the media, throwing shots at every fighters, Izzy, Connor, Kevin Holland, oh my God. I'm not even going to say what he said about Kevin Holland. On the weigh-in this morning, in the weigh-ins, <laughs> he's asking Jack, her man said if he wants to pull guard. <laughs> it was absolute greatness. Again, a lot of what he said was true. Some was just crazy shit to get a rise and, and, you know, whatever. But I need him to keep winning. That's one thing. I need Jack, um, Sean Strickland to keep winning so we can keep having these press conferences. Because he's great. He is absolutely Great. He's like a kid with ADD drinking coffee and Red Bull at the same time. He's all over the place and I love it. <laughs> Anywho, the fight itself. I want to get to some predictions and stuff about the fight itself because there is a fight coming up between these two. <laughs> if you listen to the presser, you would have not known there was a fight coming up. But yeah, there is and we're going to talk about it. When we get back from our uh, second break, stay with us. So BD4 is on so many platforms to listen to. You can listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, SoundCloud. You can listen to us on Spotify. You can find us on our sponsor, Anchor, and many other listening platforms as well wherever you get your podcast, but we are also available to watch on YouTube. So if you want to watch us on YouTube, go subscribe there. But if you prefer to listen to us, again, many, many, many listening platforms. Just be sure to subscribe, download, give us a rating, a review, comment, share the podcast, and all that fun stuff. This is BD4, where there's no better way to get your Yankees and Knicks analysis. Tomorrow night, Fight Car 200. Sean Strickland and Jack Hermanson will be going at it. It's going to be a good one, folks. Middleweight bout, main event, I think it's a five-rounder. Two top ten Top seven contenders. Strickland is seventh and Hermanson six. Strickland, 30 years old. 24 and three in MMA. 11 and three in UFC. Hopefully you can't hear the dog. I'm hoping that the the mic is not picking up the dog. Because that'd be a pain in the ass. Uh, 24 and 3 MMA. He's 11 and 3 in the UFC. 18 and 0 in the middleweight division. He's got 10 knockout wins, Strickland. Four submission wins. 10 wins by decision. He's a 6'1, 185 fighter with a 76 inch reach. Coming off his fifth straight victory. Trying to make it six. Looking for number six tomorrow. Um, his last fight was against Uriah Hall. Picked up that victory. Now he's going to be facing Hermanson. 33 year old. I think he's from Sweden. 22 and six in MMA. Nine and four in the UFC. 11 knockout wins in his career. Six submission victories and five decisions. Also 6'1", 185, with a 77 and a half reach. Coming off a win over Edmund Shabazian. 
Not heard of him, but he's coming off a victory against Shabazian via decision. Um, it's going to be interesting. You know, with with me, uh, with Jack, it, it's to me, it's the wrestling. That's how he's going to take this. He's great in the clinch. He's a submission artist. He's got great ground striking. He loves those leg locks. He's a great transition grappler. As you're talking about a guy who escaped, this is a guy who escaped three tight submissions once with the broken rib. That was that fight. Uh, I forget the guy's name. He was going up and he broke his rib. He goes out in round three of that fight. The other dude had three locks on him and he got out of all of them with a broken rib. So he's as tough as nails. When he's on his feet, he's applying constant pressure on his opponent. He's very active in stand-up, and he's got a pretty nice long jab. But if I think he is to win this fight, Hermanson, I definitely think it's going to be on the ground. He's a ground-and-pound king. He calls himself that, but he backs it up. You know, I was watching some film the other week on him. That freaking foot sweep, that foot sweep against, was it David Branch? Who's had a pretty good career, too, in MMA. That fight was over in a second. It was beautiful. Go search up that foot sweep. It was beautiful. And he's beat some some, some tough competition in his career. I mean, he had the, the heel hook against Kevin Gaslam. He outscrapped Jacare in a decision win. Like I said, he had that quick victory against Branch with the takedown, the, the, the foot sweep. And I know he lost to Vittori. Okay, but that was one hell of a battle. He went 25 minutes with the guy. And he, of course, in November, um, this past November, he lost that freestyle wrestling match to Hamza Chemaev. But if you watch that fight, if you watch that match, that thing was good. I mean, those eight points that Hamza got came at the start of the bout. This guy, Jack Hermanson, he's got a heart, man. He's got heart. Despite being, you know, the underdog in this fight, there's still a good shot. It's not like if he wins, it's going to be an extreme upset. I just think if he wins, I think it's going to be, it's going to have to be on the ground. However, it does get tricky when you think about it. Because Sean Strickland... Is a good defensive fight. And if you watch some of Hermanson's previous fights, the way he gets his takedowns, a lot come in the clinch and against the fence. Strickland defends very well in those two areas. So it's going to be good. Strickland's a good defensive fighter. He gets hit very little. And he can wrestle a little bit too. I think that's an underrated aspect of his game. He can scrap on the ground. He is a brown belt in BJJ. Now, I know people think of him as a striker, a boxer in particular. He's very aggressive, also applies pressure and paces. But he can go to the ground if he needs to. He's a good transition scrapper himself. Good in the clinch himself. Don't forget that. I still think that if uh, Strickland does win... It's going to be because of his punching power. He's going to wear Jack down on the stand-up. In stand-up. And, you know, he's got a good jab, a good check. He, I, I think I think the only thing that could get Sean in trouble is that upright stance he kind of has sometimes. And if you combine that upright stance with his super aggressiveness, if he gives Hermanson that small window... And Hermanson starts throwing a few combos. It could be it. You never know. But whatever happens. And I think Sean is the 2-1 to one favorite last time I checked. Whatever happens, I am expecting a good, a very good, very solid competitive main event. Maybe even a 25-minute war. Because these are two middleweight contenders. Currently 6-7. and seven, Fighting just one week before we get the Izzy and Whitaker fight. 
those two go at it for the middleweight title. And Strickland was also asked about the title in his presser. He could be one, maybe two tops, wins away from a, from a shot. But he's, you know, he goes off topic and he starts insulting Izzy. He doesn't really get too into it, like I said. He's a genius. With, with his trash talk, trash talk and shit, he's such a genius with it, man. Like, I know he used to be more reserved. But now, he's saying whatever the hell he wants. Because he knows he's got a potential title shot approaching him. So he's playing it up a notch now. And I know, you know, they say not to uh, never look too far ahead. But I'm sure he's making, you know, making it his gimmick to build up that fight hype for a potential title shot here. It's hard not to look ahead sometimes, but hopefully he's focused on this one. Um, But could you imagine, if we are talking ahead, could you imagine in a fantasy, and this could become reality, if Izzy Adesanya beats Rob Whitaker, Sean defeats Jack, I think I speak for most here when I say that that fight fans would rather see an Izzy-Sean title fight over whoever the winner of that Comain, Cannoneer, and Brunson is. No offense to them, but I don't think that's going to generate a ton of hype. I mean, could you imagine the press conference between Izzy and Sean Strickland? That's off the walls insane. In a main event. I mean, that's insanity. I can only imagine that. So he knows what he's doing, people. You know, people want to watch him now. Making his money. He's making his money doing this. Shit, look at me. I dedicated an entire episode to talking about this because I love the way he goes about himself. But I just can't wait for tomorrow night, man. Can't wait. I love this sport. (laughs) I love it, love it, love it. He, um, this guy's a goat. He is. Speaking of goats, so so I keep thinking lately about the uh, the greatest of all time discussion in sports. I'm going to have this in here before we go. And I was thinking about, you know, greatest of all time, you know, with Tom Brady retiring, that's, that's been, we're hearing a lot of that now. Most sports, if you think about it, at least the major sports, the ones that I follow, they have a solid, a solidified goat, right? A solidified greatest guy of all time. There's one icon, one figure who the majority believe is the goat, right? Maybe one other is right there, but most there's in every sport, or at least most sports, There's that one icon that most fans can agree is the GOAT, right? Like, if there were to be a poll of baseball fans, all baseball fans around the world, if there were to be one giant poll, I'm pretty sure that the majority of the votes would go to Babe Ruth being the the GOAT. Are there some people who would say Williams? Yeah. Mays? Sure. But I would say the majority of the votes would probably go to Ruth. In basketball? Basketball, if you surveyed a poll, it's probably all going, the majority, sorry, is probably going to Jordan. The vast majority. Again, LeBron, Wilt, sure. But most, numbers-wise, will tell you it's MJ. Football, Brady, same thing, Montana, whatever. Most will go to Brady. But in the UFC, it's the most split thing in the world, man. I, I can't tell you who the GOAT is because there's no one guy that people would just throw all... It would be... If you polled if you pulled the UFC fans and you asked them to tell you who the greatest of all time is and you gave them a list of names, it wouldn't be one favorite. I really think it'd be split. Um, Because you've got... I mean, there are so many fighters who can be considered that, but you got guys like Habib. But then you can also make a great case for Silva. Then you could make a great case for GSP. John Jones, BJ Penn. I mean, I feel like a poll would be so split. 25%, 25%, 25%, you know, between those guys. Maybe in the women's division, it's more clear-cut, right? You got Amanda and then Valentina. There's there's a debate there. But, I mean, w- with the with the men's pound-for-pound pound of all time, it really is a toss-up. There's not that one guy you can just look at. That's what's so cool about this sport. There's so many good levels of, of, so many good fighters. There's no clear-cut GOAT. Somebody's always going to have a different opinion there. And I really feel like the majority 
won't be as big of a difference between the other compared to the other guys like it is in the other sports. Anyway, <laughs> just thought I'd throw that in there. But yeah, Saturday is going to be fun. It's going to be a good main event, classic striker versus grappler. And you know, Jack's a nice guy. He's easy to root for, humble. He gets more violent after every fight. People want him to win. Sean, he's wild. He's electric. And he adds a ton of excitement into the, the middleweight division. Um, I'm definitely betting on this one. I think I'm going to make a bet. And I think I'm going to go Sean via decision. I think it goes all five. And I think Sean gets it after a close scrap. A war. And I think he's going to get it by points. Also, they should put an over-under for how many consecutive minutes Strickland talks to Hermanson during the fight. I don't know if anybody saw that clip from uh, Sean's fight against Jack Marshman. Pure gold. There was a clip that just came out. <laughs> he was literally talking to Jack Marshman in the middle of the fight, just taunting him and just trying to get into his head. Uh, this guy is such... He's pure entertainment, man. I'm telling you. Go check out that pre- that press conference if you're a fight fan who's not easily offended. It's gold. So I think it's safe to say that if you were to guess who I'm rooting for the next two weeks, it's Hermanson. <laughs> no, sorry. It's Strickland and then Adesanya because I want to see them go head-to-head someday soon. All right, let's head to our last break. When we get back, we're going to wrap this up with the NYY, NYK MMA question of the day. Stay with us. A custom wall tapestry is a surefire way to uplift any room's aesthetics with a personal touch. This 100% polyester wall tapestry comes with hemmed edges for extra durability while its mildew and water resistant properties ensure years worth of decorating bliss. The advanced tapestry printing techniques guarantee crisp detail even for the craziest of designs in any of the multiple size choices. You can select a size of 26 by 36 inches, 51 by 60, 68 by 80, and 88 by 104. These wall tapestries usually ship in seven to 10 business days And the price ranges from $24.99 to $69.99, all dependent on the size you select. The Bomber Bocker blog wall tapestries come in orange, gray, and black. But most importantly, be sure when purchasing a wall tapestry for the Bomber Bocker blog that you use promo code 6A28412. R J C six eight two eight four one E R J C. Just go to ultimate sports networks.com and click on the shop MVP tab, searching the bomber Bocker blog. And there you have it. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this episode, but first I also want to let you know, I have another blog. The blog I'm writing for is on ultimatesportsnetworks.com titled The Bomber Bocker Blog. If you want to go subscribe to this blog, you should do so using my promo code 6A2841ERJC. Using that, you'd get a discount $7.99 a month to get the best Knicks and Yankees opinionated content around. Once again, guys, the Bomber Bocker blog on ultimatesportsnetworks.com using promo code 6A2841ERJC, $7.99 a month. All right. Let's get to it. All right, so last time out, I don't even know what the question was, to be honest with you. Let's just skip right to 
this episode's question. Uh, for, ep- for, for episode 318, our NYY, NYK, MMA question of the day. Obviously going to be MMA based. Who was the first ever UFC middleweight champion? Simple, straight up. Who was the first ever UFC middleweight champion? All right, let me know the answer on Facebook or on Instagram. You can message it to me in my DMs or you can just comment the answer once I publish one of the little promo clips to this episode. And that'll be that, guys. So thank you so much for tuning in. I'm your host, RJ Carbone. Episode 318 of the podcast. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one. We'll be back with the Knicks. We'll also be recapping Saturday night's UFC Fight Night 200 between Strickland and Hermanson. It's going to be good, folks. I'll see you then. Ciao. This podcast is brought to you by Anchor. It's the best way to make a podcast. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm.